after money. There's Manny. So y'all, I'm just coming on. Ooh, it's cold, but it's gonna warm up today, so. I just dressed in layers, but I'm gonna be good. Anyway, I wanted to come on because I've been getting a lot of comments on my chitlins video. And I know a lot of people don't eat chitlins, and if you don't, if that's something that you indulge in, then it's probably not for you. But um, I had some comments. One said that's too much work that you do. You don't have to do all that. Well, for me, in my kitchen, I am going to go the extra mile because remember where these chitlins come from. This is the lining of the pig intestines and so growing up when we would have chitlins at first i was embarrassed i wouldn't even tell people that i eat chitlins <laughs> but when i grow i grew up and matured hey we all like different things we're human right but anyway so um what's that noise? must be a little anyway so um if you're gonna clean chitlins, if you're gonna cook chitlins for Thanksgiving, I advise you to go ahead and get them and start cleaning them now, and uh, put them in. Make sure you put them in freezer bags though once they're clean, and then just sit them in your freezer. And then when you get ready to cook them, all you gotta do is take them off and rinse them out and put them in the pot. And um, yeah, I do all of that. It's not a front. It's not for YouTube. This is for me. But anyway, growing up. I remember one time my sister and I, she was living in Houston at the time, and she had come home for the holiday and we were cleaning chitlins. And we pulled all that membrane because that's why all of your foreign particles come be in that membrane. That membrane separates the actual chitlin from all that stuff that, that, that passes through, right? So I remember one time we pulled all that off. And my mom went behind us and got a little pot about this big full of everything we had thrown away and she now you're talking about uh, tedious work she went through and picked all those little particles off all the little grass little pieces of fat and all that now that's very time consuming but i you know I, my eyesight is not the best so i take it i take extra precaution when cleaning mine yes i cleaned them so long my hands did my hands turn white it's like that every time i clean them and sometimes i literally Sometimes I literally, my finger will lock up. And that's when I found out about using mustard to stop you from having those cramps and stuff. Because my sister told me about it. And you lick that mustard and that cramp automatically gone. But I, you know, take so long. I had, my fingers had started cramping. And uh, I actually get a chair and sit down. It takes me that long. But who wants to eat na something nasty? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So as long as it takes for them to be clean to my specifications, to my likes, then if it's too long for you, well, that's fine. Like I say, your kitchen your way, my kitchen my way. And one guy told me, he said, nah, he said, that's what I'm talking about. Let them cook know. Yes, you do. Just like in my red beans, I pour anything that's, well, like beans, I pour the first water off. Chitlins. After the first bar, I pulled that water off. That way, any of the impurities that were on there after the wash, I can just, just toss them. I pour the water off, I rinse them, then I start cooking them. Now, some people say, well, you're rinsing all the flavor away. No, I'm not, because when I get through adding that bell pepper, celery, onion, and I cut, I leave my, I cut my bell pepper in half, and I think, I leave my onion and celery whole. I don't even cut it up. And then when my food is done, I go in there and pick the big pieces, just pick it out. So I won't even have that on my plate. And that that cooks down real fine. I mean, I, I put that on the plate. But uh, it, it it let me tell you, cleaning chitlins is not for the faint at heart. First of all, it's not the best smell, and it is a lot of work. You, I don't know if how long would you say it takes you to clean a bucket of, of a bag or whatever. And even when you get them clean, last time I think I had them, I actually had buckets because I've discovered that the buckets. And somebody was telling me that, don't get the buckets. When the last time you got a bucket? Because I we grew up doing the buckets, and then when they came out with the clean ones, hey, I started getting the clean ones. But the last clean ones I got, y'all, it had what they had done, they had pulled, some of it was the membrane they had pulled off. So instead of them trashing it, you pay for that. And I don't want to pay for something I'm not going to eat. If it's supposed to be clean, I don't expect, now I'm not saying I'm not going to go through and clean it, but I don't want to have a whole membrane to throw away. 
If you're supposed to clean the chimneys for me and you pull the membrane off, I don't want to pay for it. You understand what I'm saying? So, but yeah, I ended up getting buckets and I'm telling y'all, if you're a chilling eater, if you've been cleaning chillings and if you if you do chillings, that bucket was not that dirt. I think it was the Gwaltney brand. A Smithfield, one of them. But I'm telling y'all, get just get one and see. They were not that dirty. And then sometimes when you get them in the um the pre-clean ones, they look bitty pieces. But these in that bucket were nice, long, thick pieces of chitlins. And I'm gonna tell you something else I discovered. That um that membrane that you pull off from the back that have all that hair, I mean that 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 um dirt and stuff on it, grass. That that I remember they used to take chicken chitlins all day to cook. That's where that toughness come in from. The actual chitlin itself doesn't take that long to cook, but it's that membrane. Cause it has to be broken down, you know. I guess cook for so I'm not really sure. I don't, I'm not a I'm not a chef. I didn't go to school to be a chef, so I'm not really what, sure what that terminology it is. I guess it's a whatever it is. It, he's, it has to be broken down. But if you ever get somebody chitlins and they've been cooked a long time and they still kind of like got that rubbery consistency after they cook, that's that membrane still on there. It's almost like a hog mouth. Do y'all cook hog mouths? Now, I had done them in a long time, a long, long time. But I remember my mama, you know, by being so many of us, she would take them chitlins and she cooked them hog mouths in a separate pot because it take them a long time to cook. And once they would get tender, she'd throw them in there with them chitlins. Yep. My mom was a good cook, baby. I learned from the best. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to come in and talk about chitlins and, uh, it, it, you know, I ain't gonna lie. It, the smell and the taste is totally different. And you know what? A lot of people be like, I don't know. My son, the man, you tell you. Growing up, he didn't know. I don't like them. They smell. Baby, I let him taste them one time. He's been eating them ever since. He love them. And that's the only thing I eat hot sauce on. So it's got to be Louisiana hot sauce. And when I have pork, if you really know me, I got to have sweet potatoes. So you know I'm going to have me some sweet potatoes with them uh, chitlins. You won't find me with a pork chop and rice plate. If I got gravy with my pork chops, I got some, uh, if I got gravy with my pork chops, I got some sweet potatoes. Now, I will bake like pork steaks or uh, pork chops and uh, when I bake them, I make like loaded potatoes and green beans or something like that. But if I got pork gravy, I got to have me some sweet potatoes. And I even had a neighbor that lived by me. When they did gumbo, they had sweet potatoes on the side with their gumbo. Yep. Sure it is. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to come on and talk about that. And, uh, the store here had their chitlins in that five pound clean bag for $4.95. Now, I'm going to tell you, the cleanest chitlins that you can find is Ain't Bess's. When Ain't Bess's first come out, I'll never forget. I bought some. And if y'all think I'm lying, I'm going to go, if I can, I'm going to go back on my Yahoo account and see if I can't find. This is years and years ago. I'll never forget the lady I got in customer service name was Joanna or something. And they did. They sent me a check and gave me my money back. But the ambassadors, they come whole. Excuse me. You have to actually take them where they used to and slice them down. And when you slice them, you end up with a lot of like chitlin stuff in your water or whatever but evidently they got some kind of machine that separates it and you have to cut them and they thick and stuff and uh i can't like i say i did go ahead and cook them but to me the consistency of the ain't best is more like a hog ball than a chitlin if i can remember correctly and i started to just get one and cook them and see but man them things for a five pound bag of clean chitlin at 13.99 i said oh no jesus uh-uh no, not no $13.99. For $13.99 for a, bag, a five pound thing of chitlins, I might well give me a T-bone steak. Mm -mm. So, y'all know me. I shop selling the, the uh, Uncle Lou's. I like to buy those. and uh, But I always get them when they on sale. But uh, I usually don't cook chitlins to uh, New Year's. I did cook them one time in the year. Remember I had gone to Walmart and got them buckets for $3 or something? They probably had, had more than they had and they didn't sell. And um, so they had to go ahead and get rid of them by the, but they weren't even close to the expiration date. So I went up in there and I got them. And I cooked them and it wasn't holiday. I think that's when I was able to make that uh, 
think that's when I made that video. But I'm going to tell you something else about chitlins. And I learned this from my sister who died. When you're cooking chitlins, it, like the way I do when you boil that first, okay, the light is green. When you boil that first water out of them, you have to, uh, to get them to taste right, you got to start off using, you got to put regular salt. Make sure you put vinegar. But, but like I use Tony seasoning, you ain't going to never get enough Tony seasoning to get the salt texture, the salt content right. Uh, it's funny, Cajun seasoning has salt, but it's not the right amount of salt for certain dishes. You understand what I'm saying? You can use the Cajun seasoning, but you still gonna need some salt. Just like when you season your chicken. Put your salt first, then add your Cajun seasoning and see what, you know. That's what I learned from trial and error. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all, it's Monday. Let's have a blessed week. Make somebody smile. Remember you're blessed to be a blessing. Much love. Bye. Bye, man. Have an awesome day. You too. Love you.